One thing that's been intrigued me about the Turkish election is the Western media coverage of the incumbent Recep Tayyip Erdogan. It's virulently hostile. Der Spiegel says that if he wins, he'll become president for life and abolish all elections. The Economist described him as a dictator, not just once, but actually seven times over the last uh, decade. Le Point compared him to Vladimir Putin and actually blamed Erdogan, he said that both Russia and Turkey were expansionist powers and they believed in the restoration of empire, the Russian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. And as evidence for that, they cited Syria, where other armies have been all over the place, and the Turkish invasion of uh, Northern Cyprus, which happened in 1974 under a CHP Kemalist Prime Minister. The Telegraph said that uh, Putin was the enemy within NATO. What's going on here? There are several uh, issues that, that, that come to mind. One is that all of these organs would say that they are in favour of free elections. And this election is genuinely free. Yes, it is an un uneven playing field. Yes, it is polarised. Yes, the election is, 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 is dirty and bitterly fought, but it is free. Every single ballot will be scrutinised by every single political stakeholder at all stages of the process of counting, transport and the final reckoning. The second point to make is that free elections are a rarity in the Middle East. I can't think of a single Arab state which has an election like this. All elections are rigged and The Economist and Der Spiegel and Le Point all know this too. So why are they being so hostile to Turkey? We also know that there are many uh, leading figures in the Middle East that are much less democratic than Erdogan and who would not subject themselves to a free election. We all know what uh, the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman did to Jamal Khashoggi. We know that 81 names have just been added by Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, the president of Egypt, to his terrorism list. And they are names of journalists and human rights defenders. We know he has 60,000 political prisoners rotting and dying in jail. Where is the uproar about this? Where are the front page covers about this? Is it because Erdogan's authoritarian? Or is it because he's independent? Or is it because he's Muslim? Der Spiegel gives a clue. They pictured a growling Erdogan sitting on a cracking throne and behind him there was a crescent, the symbol of Islam, that was cracking as well. Now could you imagine them putting Benjamin Netanyahu on the throne? He has allied himself to fascists and to terrorists. Could you imagine them drawing a Star of David behind Netanyahu that was cracking? Could you just imagine the uproar that would have taken place if, if that had happened? But back on the planet Earth, there are two elements that make this election really close. The first is that the opposition has for once united around a credible liberal candidate. And the second is that Erdogan has made massive mistakes in how he runs the economy. And every Turk feels this. Every Turk feels the loss of purchasing power and the rise of the cost of living. So. If there is one factor that is undermining Erdogan, it is not his authoritarianism. It's the economy, stupid, as Bill Clinton once said. But the Western media are absolutely determined to ignore all that and frame this election as the Democrat versus the autocrat. They will be surprised because underneath the alleged democracy of Kemal Kilic Darogu, there lies very undemocratic forces, for instance, racist forces. The opposition has promised to, to kick out, either voluntarily or involuntarily, four million Syrian refugees. And where would those refugees go? Would they go back to Syria or would they start climbing the high fences of Europe once again? Once that happens, Europe might be having second thoughts about Kilic Darug. But I'm sure one thing is for certain. This is actually nothing to do with whether Turkey has an authoritarian leader or a democratic one. The West is absolutely comfortable with autocrats who are far worse than Erdogan. What this is to do is with power projection. And the West wants Turkey once again to be its tame plaything. And Turks have to decide whether that is what they want for themselves as well. There are a lot depends on this election and it is far from clear that Turkey's independence will be maintained if it moves closer to Europe, closer to America 
and closer to NATO.